Welcome back. All day we've been at Royal Troon, not just to cover the golf, but also to find out about the excellent work being done to help people tread lighter on the planet. Let's get back to David Garrido. Last time he was at the Sustainable Golf Hub. Where are you now, David? Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, we have moved away from the uh, Spectator Village and here to the open zone. This is where Sky basically can probably see um, Henny and Josh anchoring the coverage, um, presenting Sunday at the open and just all this week bringing you coverage of the most prestigious golf open major championship there is, which is the open. Um, and of course, we've been talking about climate sustainability, nature and biodiversity to do with golf all morning and early afternoon. And often, I'm asked, well, what, what do you do at Sky? You know, you've got to walk your talk. Well, well, let me tell you, when it comes to an event like this, well, there's a few different buckets that sort of falls into. The first one is waste. So obviously we try and waste as little as we, as we can. That's things to do with like completely removing single use plastic from all of our operations. Then there is what we call remote production. So there are some roles that, don't have to be done from here on site. They can be done from our, our base in West London. And so we do as much remote production as we can, which of course reduces the amount of kit and crew that we take to events. That in turn saves on hotel accommodation, which emits carbon emissions, also just travel. So, so we have a, a lower carbon footprint through remote production. And the other thing is energy. Now, when it comes to an event like this, when we're the host broadcaster, it's in the UK and Ireland, we have generators to, to, to drive our operations. And they are powered by Waste HVO, and we mentioned this before with Tom Critchley on the campsite, HVO is hydro-treated vegetable oil, which is way, way better than something like diesel, for example. But what about golf as a whole and the, the general direction of travel, where we're headed? Um, let's bring in Dr. Robbie Fitzpatrick, um, who is, um, well, a, a doctor, as we say. We believe that Robbie is the only doctor with a PhD in sustainable golf, which in itself is quite cool, uh, and also the lead on impact innovation at the GEO Sustainable Golf Foundation. Great to speak to you, Robbie. Good to speak to you, David. Thank um, you very much for having on. No worries. So, so um, we've been discussing what goes on here at Royal Troon for the Open, what the RNA do, and, and lots of other stakeholders in the game. Um, but this plays into a wider framework called Green Links. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so the RNA have their Open Green Links programme, and that essentially is a clear, comprehensive approach to organising golf, major golf events in a more sustainable way. And you can see initiatives acr across the Open here at Troon, um, including the water wall. We've got the Sustainable Golf Hub where spectators can learn more about what Royal Troon and the other open venues are doing around habitat, biodiversity, to conserve resources while maintaining incredible playing conditions for the best players in the world. Yeah, and it's important, isn't it, to, to have these sort of frameworks. But then I guess it has an impact and that ripple effect, right, um, beyond our shores. OK, in the UK and, and internationally, how is this sort of stuff being reflected? Absolutely. So we're seeing more and more golf tournaments across Scotland and the UK as a whole embracing sustainability. Championships such as the Genesis Scottish Open last week, um, the AIG Women's Open, the Freed Group, Women's Scottish Open, the BMW PGA Championship, they're all involved in sustainability frameworks and they're working diligently to improve year on year as well. Yeah. It's actually, I was chatting to, to Libby Newell in the, in the last hour, um, as you know, uh, who is head of corporate sustainability at, at the RNA, and we did this event at the AIG Women's Open and uh, just seeing the interest and the sort of ripple effect, lots of young people trying to find out about this topic in a kind of very cool Glasto style tent, um, so which obviously kind of attracts people as well. Um, but as, as you know, Robbie, look, golf has been on a journey, hasn't it? It's not always had the easiest of relationships with climate sustainability, nature biodiversity. Uh, and often, you know, if you mentioned golf, people would just hit it with the stick of, oh, well, you clear natural habitats to build the courses, you use too much water, pesticides, yada, yada, yada. But it's done a lot of hard work to flip the script, hasn't it? Tell us a little bit about where we're headed now. Um, as I said, the general direction of travel and what's the most exciting thing, do you think, coming up in the future? Absolutely. So we're seeing golf emerging as a really positive force for change, and that's through regenerating biodiversity, mental and physical health, raising awareness and inspiring wider cultural change as well. Um, so as we move forward into the future, I think yeah. golf is yeah. beginning to recognise that sustainability is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to engage with new gen a new generation, new demographics of players. It's an opportunity to provide more nature-inspired golfing experiences and also really to, to improve the sector as a whole and its impact, not just on sport, but society at large as well. Yeah. 